Okay, we are in the office of G. L. Brower. Uh, Beatland Press is very uh, excited to announce us, that he is on our roster now, and we're discussing his new book. He's published many, many books, but his new book, Islands on the Land. Islands on the Land is a new little book that um, I'm pu I published with Beatlick Press of Albuquerque this year. I've been thinking about this book for a long time. It's basically the reminiscence of my experiences in the late 70s and early 80s when I worked in Southern Oregon with uh, Mexican migrant workers. As someone who speaks Spanish, as I do, um, I took a job with the uh, when I got up there from Los Angeles, um, and I ended up not, you know, unexpectedly, shall we say, because uh, with working with migrant workers, because they had a job available uh, for me to do so, and so I picked up this job. And I worked with the migrant workers in more than one uh, job, actually, ultimately. Uh, and essentially, these migrant workers in Southern Oregon, which ran in the high picking season, uh, particularly mainly for pears, um, in the high picking season, there were probably as many, at some summers, as many as 6,000 in the late summer. And so I had volunteers. Uh, I had um, a volunteer driver. Uh, I had uh, students from Southern Oregon State University in Ashland that were uh, essentially provided by the, la the local Spanish professor, Chela. And um, they came out to the migrant camps with me. And uh, we, first of all, we had uh, books when I worked in the library and later uh, from Ashland's uh, Southern Oregon State University, those students uh, worked with the migrant workers in terms of teaching them survival English. Uh, they were, these workers are mainly there to pick pears. Uh, some of them picked other uh, fruit and so on. Uh, unfortunately, there were a lot of uh, abuses of pay abuses and treatment of the workers. Um, in one instance, uh, workers that were recruited by a local tree planting company uh, for the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management of the U.S. government, were taken way back into the mountains to plant trees. And they would work them there, uh, sometimes on the side, mountain sides, in very dangerous terrain. Uh, and then they would say, well, get in the, uh, the bus is here and we're going to take you back into Medford, Oregon, and we're going to pay you. But they would put them at a certain motel in southern Medford, and then they would call the immigration police. So these workers were never paid. They were simply cleared out, and then shortly after that more workers came in and they repeated the same, really, crime. The workers there, um, in, that was just one situation, but in general, the, the, the workers who are mainly of agricultural background in Mexico came up to work in the United States at that time because there had been um, a lot of dumping of corn and other products um, into Mexico, which meant that the people who, the farmers who lived on the land there could no longer support themselves by raising corn, making tortillas, and that sort of thing. Because the uh, large agricultural companies in the United States, like ADM and Cargill, under the NAFTA agreement, dumped millions of tons of corn into Mexico, which they couldn't do previously, but under the NAFTA agreement they could. And when they did this, they drove more than three million Mexican workers off their own land. They had to find work somewhere else, and they came up to the United States to work. And being agricultural workers, they came up specifically to work in agricultural professions, whether it was picking pears, as in southern uh, uh, Oregon, 
or other products and working in rural areas with agricultural produce. Keep viewing this playlist and learn more about G. L. Brower and Allen's on the Land. Thanks for watching.